The Marine Corps has played an active role in San Diego history ever since Marines from the Sloop of War Cyan seized Old Town during the Mexican-American War in 1846. Marines have been stationed at the Recruit Depot since 1921, when most of the buildings here front were constructed. These buildings, known as the Arcade, were designed by world-famous architect Bertram Goodhue. The Arcade is among 25 buildings that have qualified for inclusion on the National Register of Historic Places and are outstanding examples of Spanish colonial revival architecture. Since 1923, more than a million Marines have completed their recruit training here at the Marine Corps Recruit Depot San Diego, and since 1915 at the Marine Corps East Coast Recruit Training Depot at Paris Island, South Carolina. Regardless of where a Marine attended boot camp, you can rest assured that they received the toughest and most physically and mentally demanding recruit training offered anywhere in the world. Some individual techniques and methods may have evolved over the years, but the focus and adherence to our core values of honor, courage, and commitment are as strong today as any time in our history. Today, the Marines of Company I accept the responsibilities to safeguard this proud tradition as they step forward to join this rich heritage. Ahead of them lie bright futures that will no doubt add to the proud Marine legacy that they now rightfully claim as their own. Corporal Manny is a four-year-old, full-blooded English Bulldog born in Fallbrook, California on July 9, 2018. He is named in honor of Sergeant Johnny R. Manuelito Sr., one of the original 29 Navajo Code Talkers who trained in the first all Navajo platoon here aboard the depot in 1942. Sergeant Manuelito helped create the code that the Navajos developed at Camp Elliott, now Marine Corps Air Station Miramar. He became an instructor, teaching other Navajo Marines the Navajo Code. Later, Sergeant Manuelito participated in the Battle of Iwo Jima, where a Marine signals officer stated, had it not been for the Code Talkers, we would have never taken Iwo Jima. Corporal Manny continues the tradition of a long line of Marine Corps Bulldog mascots, dating back to 1921, when Brigadier General Smedley Butler appointed Sergeant Major Jiggs as the first Bulldog mascot for Marine Corps Barracks Quantico. He's being escorted by the Office of Communications Strategy and Operations, Corporal Max J. Noel. Spiritual development plays an important part in the making of a United States Marine. Lieutenant Commander Ulysses L. Yobalde, Chaplain Corps, United States Navy, will deliver the graduation prayer. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise. Let us pray. Lord, May everything we do begin with your inspiration and continue with your help so that all our prayers and works may begin in you and by you happily ended. Gracious Father, we praise you for this wonderful day as we come together to celebrate the achievements of these U.S. Marines. This is a special day in the life of these graduates. As they embark on the next chapter of their lives, we pray that the same hand that has kept them thus far will continue to be in their lives. May God's hand of protection be upon them, and may God's word continue to be a light unto their path. Help them to make wise decisions and to always keep your holy name first in everything what they do and everything they do. We also pray for all the officers and drill instructors who trained our new U.S. Marines. We pray to protect, guide, and watch over them and their families. Fill them with your love, compassion, and your radiance. We ask this in your holy name. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. The Commanding General, Marine Corps Recruit Depot San Diego, welcomes you to what is a historic event in the life of a Marine. Their graduation from boot camp, 
Approximately 40 weeks each year for the past 100 years, new Marines have departed San Diego for service with units of the Marine Corps around the globe. The primary mission of the Recruit Depot is to provide basic training to recruits in this west of the Mississippi, which represents approximately 51% of all applicants in the Marine Corps each year. The Depot is also home to Recruiter School and Drill Instructor School. All our efforts here are geared toward one end, producing America's finest fighting force, the United States Marines. This morning, Company I, 3rd Recruit Training Battalion, Recruit Training Regiment, will form and march in the parade. Following the pass and review, the graduating Marines will return front and center of the reviewing stand for final dismissal. The staff for today's parade is comprised of Marines from the Recruit Training Regiment. The Commander of Troops is Captain John F. Hunt, Company Commander, Company I, 3rd Recruit Training Battalion. The Parade Adjutant is Captain William Brandon, Executive Officer, Company I, 3rd Recruit Training Battalion, Recruit Training Regiment. The marching units are now being called to attention, and the adjutant's command, sound adjutant's call, will begin today's parade. Marching in today's parade are 183 of the graduating Marines from Company I. Among the 183 Marines are two Marines who displayed outstanding performances in two individually graded events. Private First Class Devin V. Sanchez from Platoon 3202 is the Company High Shooter scoring a 336 out of 350. Private First Class Samuel L. Beckett from Platoon 3201 is the most physically fit Marine scoring a 296 out of 300 on the physical fitness test and a 300 out of 300 on the combat fitness test. They will be receiving awards from the Marine Corps Association and Foundation. Present today is the Company Honor Graduates Recruiter, Staff Sergeant Andrew K. Hoopit. Also present today is the Primary Marksmanship Instructor with a platoon high shooting average of 220 for platoon 3,207, Sergeant Zorneth L. Yabao. Recruit training is comprised of subjects required to produce basic Marines who function effectively in garrison, are trained in rudimentary individual field and combat skills, and practice the personal and professional traits which distinguish them as Marines. Examples of these traits are discipline, the achievement of a state of discipline which assures respect for authority, instant and willing obedience to orders, and the self-reliance to maintain or improve those traits which exemplify a Marine. Military bearing, consistently demonstrating military presence and personal awareness, as well as the proper wearing and maintenance of uniforms. Esprit de corps, acquiring the common spirit of the Marine Corps that inspires enthusiasm, devotion, pride, initiative, teamwork, aggressiveness, determination, moral courage, integrity, camaraderie, and the burning desire to work with and for others toward excellence and common goals. For 246 years, Marines have fought and won whenever and wherever the nation calls, in the harshest conditions, over the most brutal terrain, and against the most formidable enemies, Marines defend the ideals of freedom with grit and tenacity. Though battlefields change, and capabilities evolve, history proves that true victory comes from the individual Marine, with steel resolve, the drive to overcome any obstacle, and the warrior spirit to fight on against all odds. It takes that steadfast faithfulness, semper fidelis, to core, country, and each other that abounds throughout our storied legacy. Marines today remain in combat, four deployed throughout the world, confronting every challenge with courage, loyalty, and faithfulness. They are resolved to be most ready when the nation 
is least ready. To defend freedom anytime and anywhere. To stand ready to aid those devastated by natural disasters. To pay tribute to those who have forged our proud legacy. And to honor the families and loved ones who faithfully stand beside us. For the Marines of Company I, today marks the end of the 13-week recruit training cycle. They have marched countless miles at Camp Pendleton and on this parade deck, and have been trained, as are all Marines, as basic riflemen. In addition, due to an intensive physical training program, their strength and endurance have doubled since their arrival aboard the Recruit Depot. They are Marines, qualified to take their places in the ranks of the world's finest fighting organization. The platoons are now being aligned from left to right in order to get them into their exact positions for the parade. The next portion of the ceremony will be our national anthem. We welcome veterans and members of the armed forces to join us in rendering appropriate honors with a military salute. For guests who have not served in the military, it is proper etiquette during the national anthem to place their right hand over their hearts and for those in the audience wearing headgear to remove it. Will the guests please rise for the presentation of the colors. Ladies and gentlemen, our national anthem.
Thank you. Please be seated. Following the command, Parade Rest, the Parade Adjutant will give the command sound off, which signals the band to parade forward of the assembled Marines while playing military marching music.
The parade adjutant now presents the assembled command to the commander of troops. At the command, officers center march. All unit commanders and guide on bearers march to the front and center of the formation. Historically, it was at this point that commanding officers would issue orders and instructions to the unit commanders. Following this, the unit leaders would face about, return to their units, and pass the information along to their Marines.
Throughout our nation's history, millions of men and women have earned the title United States Marine. Many who have helped shape our history join us here today. In keeping with the tradition of once a Marine, always a Marine, we would like to recognize them. At this time, those in the audience who have served as Marines, please rise. Ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause for their dedicated service to Corps and country. Thank you. Please be seated. We would also like to extend a warm welcome to Sergeant Major Peter A. Sia, Sergeant Major for First Marine Expeditionary Force, who is attending today to see his son graduate, Private First Class Stokovich from Platoon 3207. Welcome, Sergeant Major Sia. Ladies and gentlemen, the Battalion Commander for 3rd Recruit Training Battalion, Lieutenant Colonel Christopher A. Ashenhurst. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, family and friends, distinguished guests. On behalf of the Commanding General of the Marine Corps Recruit Depot San Diego and the Western Recruiting Region, Brigadier General Morris, as well as the commanding officer of the Recruit Training Regiment, Colonel Jones. It is my pleasure to welcome you to the graduation ceremony for Company I. It is also my distinct pleasure to introduce our parade reviewing official, Major General Fade, whose impressive biography you will hear shortly. General, it is an honor to have you with us today. Now I'd like to take a few moments to talk about why I'm so proud of the young men you've come to see graduate. But first, let me draw your attention to these impressive Marines wearing those distinctive green campaign covers. They certainly do not need an introduction from me for we all know them as the legendary Marine Corps drill instructor. From the moment a recruit arrives aboard the depot, there is a drill instructor with them, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, everywhere they go. For it is the drill instructor that is the heartbeat of what it takes to transform a civilian into a United States Marine. Of the thousands of people we will meet throughout our lives, let's be honest, most of them we will forget. But no Marine anywhere will ever forget the name, the face, or the gentle loving voice of their drill instructor. Also seated by the reviewing stands are the families of the officers and drill instructors of India Company. These families know firsthand the time, dedication, and sacrifice it takes to make Marines, and we could not do it without their love and support. So if you would all please join me in a round of applause for the families of India Company. We also know that making Marines is a team effort, and it all begins with the hardworking Marine Corps recruiters who are spread throughout this great country of ours. Today, Marine Corps Recruiting Command is represented by Staff Sergeant Hoopy of Recruiting Substation Billings, Montana. Staff Sergeant Hoopy was the recruiter for our company honor graduate, Lance Corporal Kaysen. It was Staff Sergeant Hoopy who first gave Lance Corporal Kaysen the opportunity to earn the title Marine. Outstanding job, Staff Sergeant. Now let me turn my attention back to the remarkable young men standing in this formation behind me. They are truly some of the best this country has to offer. When they arrived here, they were young and fit, 19 years old on average and already in better shape than most people their age. 99% of them are high school graduates. Six of them have already earned a college degree. But furthermore, they displayed a courage and a commitment that most of their peers could never muster when they raised their right hand and swore that solemn oath to support and defend the Constitution of the United States. They come from every expanse of the globe, in this case five different countries. Some are from as far away as Fiji or Cameroon, others are from just across the street here in San Diego. But it was a single goal that brought the 183 of them together, and that goal was to earn the title Marine. Three months ago they embarked on the world's most demanding entry-level training as they got off those buses and stepped foot into our historic yellow footprints. And trust me, throughout their time here, they have undoubtedly been tested. They have been trained and evaluated in the attributes that make the Corps both unique and deadly. We have developed in each of them a physical and mental toughness that will never quit 
or give up despite the odds. They've been indoctrinated in our core values of honor, courage, and commitment so that we create Marines of exemplary character both at peace and at war. They've been trained in battlefield-tested warfighting skills so that when this nation calls, its Marines always win. And thanks to the marksmanship instructors at Weapons Field Training Battalion in Camp Pendleton, when these Marines arrive on their objective, they are capable of delivering precision rifle fire at a pinpoint target at staggering distances out to 500 yards. Today, Weapons Field Training Battalion is represented by Sergeant Yabao, who was the marksmanship instructor for our high shooting platoon, Platoon 3207. Outstanding job, Sergeant Yabao. And finally, we created small unit leaders out of each of them and evaluated their ability to decide, act, and communicate with a bias for intelligent action, for that is what the future operating environment will demand. Now, in addition to all of that, I hope yesterday you noticed a few other upgrades we've installed. They should have stood a little taller. They certainly looked a little leaner. They should have looked you in the eyes and said these strange phrases like, yes, sir, yes, ma'am. Moms and dads, it should be a long time before you have to tell one of these Marines to get a job or a haircut, and I assure you, they know how to clean up after themselves and make their beds. But it is the change within that we are the most proud of, for having been indoctrinated in our core values, and then by virtue of the fact that they stand here today, means that they've embraced those values as their own. And so it is because of this journey they have made, because of the physical, mental, and moral development they've displayed, which was built upon the foundation that you all laid, that I am proud to present 183 young men who through their own blood, sweat, and tears can now and forever claim the title United States Marine. Now, if you'll excuse me for a moment while I address our new Marines one last time. Good morning, Marines. Did you all hear that? That is pure pride. That is pride in themselves, pride in the title that they have earned. Now, India Company, I know when you arrived here so many weeks ago, the last thing on your mind was graduation. You were probably thinking, what in the world have I gotten myself into, and how do I get them to stop yelling at me? But you stand here today as America's newest Marines, having accomplished something that most would never dare attempt. And when you get home this weekend, people are going to look up to you. They're going to be proud of you, as they should. And your friends are going to ask you how you did it. And when they ask you that, I want you to take them for a walk down to your recruiting station and introduce them to your recruiters. Because I can promise you, your drill instructors would love to meet your friends. But remember that with this new title comes a great responsibility. For the strength of the Marine Corps is not found in a weapon system or piece of equipment, it is found in the war fighting spirit of the individual Marine. That is what matters most in combat and that is what makes us different. This world is a dangerous and chaotic place, but that is why we have you and the legacy of our Corps of not only being the first to fight, but to always win belongs to you now for safekeeping. That Eagle Globe and Anchor that we handed you on top of the Reaper represents 246 years of all of the Marines that have gone before you. So be proud of yourself. Be proud of what you have accomplished, but remember who you now are and who you now represent, and always remember to protect what you've earned. So on behalf of the officers, the drill instructors, and all of the support personnel here aboard Marine Corps Recruit Depot San Diego, let me be the first to wish you fair winds, following seas, Semper Fidelis Marines, welcome to our Corps. Now taking their position in the reviewing area is today's parade reviewing official, Major General Michael F. Fahey. Commanding General of 4th Marine Division. He is accompanied by Brigadier General Jason L. Morris, Commanding General for Marine Corps Recruit Depot San Diego and the Western Recruiting Region.
Major General Michael F. Fahey, Commanding General of Fourth Marine Division. Major General Michael F. Fahey III was commissioned in 1987 after graduating from the University of San Diego. Upon successfully completing the basic school, he attended the Infantry Officer Course aboard Quantico, Virginia, earning the Military Occupational Specialty of 0302 Infantry Officer. Major General Fahey has served in a variety of challenging billets in numerous commands to include Rifle Platoon Commander at 3rd Battalion, 9th Marine Regiment, Company Commander at Alpha Company, Intelligence Support Battalion, San Diego, Commanding Officer at 4th Force Reconnaissance Company, Alameda, California, Deputy Director at Joint Detachment, Denver, Colorado, and Joint Intelligence Operations Center, Honolulu, Hawaii, Officer in Charge at National Intelligence University, Defense Intelligence Agency, Washington, D.C., Commanding General at Force Headquarters Group, Marine Force Reserve, and Commanding General at Marine Forces South. Major General Fahey currently serves as the Commanding General of 4th Marine Division. Major General Fahey's personal awards include the Defense Superior Service Medal, Legion of Merit, Defense Meritorious Service Medal, Meritorious Service Medal with Gold Star in lieu of Second Award, Joint Service Commendation Medal, Navy and Marine Corps Commendation Medal, Joint Service Achievement Medal, Navy and Marine Corps Achievement Medal, and the Combat Action Ribbon with Gold Star in lieu of Second Award. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Major General Michael F. Fahey. More than a million Marines have been trained here in the past 100 years and have departed San Diego for combat in conflicts around the world, including places whose names are immediately associated with Marine courage and dedication. Names such as Guadalcanal, Tarawa, Iwo Jima, Pusan, Inchon, Chosen Reservoir, Quezon, Way City, Lebanon, Renata, Panama, Kuwait, Somalia, Fallujah, Ramadi, Marjah, Sangen, and our most current operations worldwide. This parade deck is rich in history and tradition, and no Marine trained here ever forgets its sights and sounds. Ladies and gentlemen, the Commander of Troops, Captain John F. Hunt, Company Commander and the Regimental Staff. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, as the national flag passes directly in front of you, please rise. Once it passes, you may be seated.
Marine Ben San Diego, Marine Corps Crew Depot, San Diego, California. Series 3201, Series Commander Captain Austin J. Muswell and Honor Platoon 3201, Senior Drill Instructor Staff Sergeant Michael R. Moser. Platoon 3202, Senior Drill Instructor Staff Sergeant Alexander E. Salas. Platoon 3203, Senior Drill Instructor, Staff Sergeant Deshaun M. Nedidog. The Regimental Color Guard is led by the Regimental Color Sergeant, Drill Instructor, Sergeant DeMarcus Hill. Series 3205, Series Commander Captain Kirkland L. Vetrella. Platoon 3205, Senior Drill Instructor Staff Sergeant Christopher J. Ruane. Platoon 3206, Senior Drill Instructor, Gunnery Sergeant Andrew R. Doherty. Platoon 3207, Senior Drill Instructor, Gunnery Sergeant Rolando Leva. Ladies and gentlemen, if you turn to page 21 of your graduation pamphlets, you will find the Marine's Hymn. The Marine's Hymn has a history dating back to 1859. It is a long-standing tradition for Marines to face the direction of the music and stand at attention when it is heard. It is now directed at all Marines present and to have served honorably. And ladies and gentlemen, you are all encouraged to join, sing the words to the first verse as Marine Band San Diego performs, Anchors Away, followed by the Marine's Hymn. Will the guest please rise?
The Marine Corps' uniqueness and strength as an elite fighting force is directly attributable to the magnificent efforts of the drill instructors and company officers who train and supervise the recruits. The distinct qualities of spirit and discipline, the heart and soul of every Marine, have been developed, nurtured, and ingrained in recruits through their observance and relationship with their drill instructors and officers. Recruit training is the very foundation of the Corps. Each year, recruit training provides thousands of America's finest young men and women with the basic knowledge and skills to function in a profession characterized by its own set of high values and tough standards. The most important thing we do in the Marine Corps is make Marines. The individual Marine is the Corps. That is what we do here. For the Marines graduating today, the long, arduous journey of the last 13 weeks is but a small step into the future of the Marine Corps. As they prepare to fill the ranks of our Corps, they do so with unquestionable support for the high ideals and standards of the United States of America and the United States Marine Corps. Although Company I prepares for their final dismissal from boot camp today, their initial training is not over. Soon, after graduation, they will report to the School of Infantry at Pendleton, California, where they will continue to be trained to serve as an effective member of a Marine Rifle Squad. The intense initial training that every Marine undergoes is designed to instill the fundamental premise that every Marine is a rifleman. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we would like to introduce to you the Marines responsible for ensuring the success of the difficult transition required to become a Marine. The company commander is Captain John F. Hunt. The company first sergeant is First Sergeant Christian A. Fuentes. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in a round of applause for the company staff of Company I. The next portion of the ceremony will be the traditional function of retiring, the guidons. The guidons have been carried by the platoons throughout recruit training and are being retired to symbolize the disbanding of platoons. All similar units in the Marine Corps carry such guidons, which identify the unit and are a source of pride to each individual member. Note that the honor of carrying these guidons is bestowed upon those Marines who displayed outstanding leadership qualities, motivation, and character, and were selected as the platoon honor graduates. The platoon honor graduates compete for the titles of series and company honor graduate. They are considered the top Marines graduating today, and have demonstrated the highest potential for future leadership and responsibility in the Marine Corps.
the Guidons will now be returned to the drill instructors. The honor graduates will now be presented a plaque by the battalion commander, Lieutenant Colonel Ashenhurst, and the battalion sergeant major, Sergeant Major Cruz. Ladies and gentlemen, please hold your applause until all honor graduates have been recognized. The honor graduate for Platoon 3201 and the company honor graduate is Lance Corporal Nicholas T. Kaysen from Long Island, New York. Lance Corporal Kaysen is also the recipient of the Chessie Puller Award for his outstanding meritorious performance while in recruit training. The honor graduate for Platoon 3202 is Private First Class Dylan E. Gross from Kashmir, Washington. The honor graduate for Platoon 3203 is Private First Class Scott Smith from Blazerville, California. The honor graduate for Platoon 3205 is Private First Class Carl C. Nickerson from Camby, Oregon. The honor graduate for Platoon 3206 and the series honor graduate is Private First Class Jalen L. Jones from O'Fallon, Illinois. And the honor graduate for Platoon 3207 is Private First Class Luke A. Daffler from Rockdale, Texas. Ladies and gentlemen, the honor graduates of Company I. Company first sergeant, according to his order. The 
The company first sergeant will now give the command to the senior drill instructors to dismiss their platoons. Needless to say, this will be the most welcome command they have received throughout recruit training. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's ceremony.